Hello and welcome to, the, to a new Mendix Expert Developer Webinar. My name is Jan de Vries and I will be your host for today. Today's webinar will be about creating offline mobile apps in Mendix and will pr be presented by Denny Roost and Akil van der Mendele. Denny will provide tips and best practices for developing offline mobile apps while Akil will talk about real life use cases, how to update and use available widgets and what you can expect for offline mobile in Mendix 7. During the webinar, you can submit your questions in the question window in GoToWebinar. After the presentation, Danny and Akil will answer any questions. The questions and answers will be added to the webinar page afterwards. Before we start, please look at the handouts window in GoToWebinar to find the presentation slides. Thank you for joining and enjoy the presentation. I'll now give the floor to Akil. Hi, thanks uh, Jan for that introduction. As I said, I'm uh, Akil van der Mandel. I'm a product manager for Web and Mobile with uh, R&D, and I'm joined here by uh, Danny Roost. He's our technical consultant uh, for mobile, uh, especially offline mobile apps. Today we're going to be talking offline and mobile. We're going to start with a general view: what is offline, how does it relate to online apps, kind of look at uh, the, the fundamental differences between these two and then jump into some uh, typical use cases. What are the, the typical use cases that we see our customers uh, building with uh, uh, offline mobile? Uh, and then I'm going to give it uh, back over to Danny. He's going to be talking about uh, how to tackle some of these challenges uh, that you have when building offline apps. We're going to uh, talk about some of the limitations you have and he'll come up with some uh, tips and tricks and some common patterns to uh, address these things. After that, he's going to kick it back over to me and I'll go into uh, our roadmap uh, and uh, some of the exciting things that we're going to be releasing uh, now and in the upcoming months leading up to Mendix 7. So offline, as you probably know, uh, Mendix apps are uh, usually inherently online in the sense that uh, with Mendix you build web apps. Uh, and these run in the cloud and everyone, every user of these apps, they all see the same data in real time, right? So if two people are using the same app and one changes something, the other person will also immediately see this reflected in their app. This is a little different for offline apps where you have your data on your phone and this might be stale. And we're gonna go into uh, these uh, problems how to address this. Uh, I'd like to take a step back and kind of go into why this is difficult and why having stale data is uh, tricky. I'm going to talk a little about uh, two guys from uh, Acme Widgets. Uh, let's say uh, their names are Jake and Bob. One works in sales and the other in customer success. And they both have uh, an offline enabled app uh, to manage their uh, customers. They, they have some CRM uh, package. Uh, and uh, they happen to also uh, have the same client, same customer that they're talking to. So one morning they both uh, come to the office, they sync up uh, their data on their app and they both uh, go to the uh, same customer and they happen to have the same customer also booked on the same day but separate meetings. And this customer happens to be working in the jungle so that's why they don't have network connectivity there. And the sales guy, he has a very uh, successful meeting. Uh, he uh, sells, uh, let's say, I don't know, a thousand uh, widgets, uh, but at a very kind of sharp price because he's, uh, he feels like a generous guy uh, that day. So he inputs that into his app uh, and, uh, and then uh, planning on uh, syncing that up uh, back uh, later when he uh, does have network access. And he uh, happily goes on his way. In the meantime, uh, his colleague, uh, the CSM guy, he has a meeting and they're talking about uh, that uh, they're not really doing that well, so he'd like to offer this same customer a discount. So he says, for the rest of the year, all of these orders that you do with us, you'll get a, whatever, 50% discount on all these things. Uh, and again, both of these people were at this customer and they all both made these decisions based on the data that they had that they synced that morning. So they both had stale data and made decisions. And now the problem uh, that afternoon or that evening when they get 
uh, back to the office and sync back up that one of these guys made a decision based on the information that he had to place an order and the other guy decided to give a discount but now all of a sudden they have an order with a uh, severely uh, discounted uh, price and now they're making a loss and this is why it's difficult to uh, handle conflict, conflict resolution, why it's difficult to have offline data that's stale and then to resolve uh, conflicts in that data uh, later. So the typical use cases that we see people doing are kind of twofold. The first are reference style apps or apps that generally give you insights in some type of data. Uh, in this case, uh, the example I have on the sheet here is a supply type of app where you can uh, get some more uh, information on the, the painting supplies that you happen to have at the office. Uh, maybe you have you you work at a certain company where you need some insight in some product specifications, or uh, we have some people go out into the field and they need to know whether certain parts are in warranty or not, but they don't know whether they'll have network connect connectivity there, so they want this information available offline on their device. The other type of app that we see people doing are uh, field worker apps where you have a central database system of uh, tasks, uh, things that need to be uh, performed, maybe an inspection type of app, and field workers in the morning, they go to the office, they sync up their tasks, tasks. The problem is they don't know whether they'll uh, have uh, network uh, access there uh, or not. So. Um, uh, they, they want this app to be uh, available offline and to, to, to run all the time. And this is also a relatively small app. You create small bunch, uh, small amounts of data, but you, you generally don't have conflicting data like the case I was talking before. You only mark things as done. You're, you're editing data that's contextual to you. Uh, great. So, how does this work? All of a sudden now it sounds like all of this is very complicated. We've uh, actually tried to make it as simple as possible, as, uh, especially uh, for people who are already used to the Mendix way of modeling. And the basic premise that we set out to do when we started with implementing offline is that your app should always work. Uh, no matter if you have network connectivity or not, it should always work. So we accomplish that by trying to get all of the data, all of the information that you need for your app and put those on your device so that it always uh, works. What a lot of uh, other implementations do is they try to prefetch certain amounts of your data and then if you kind of go from one page to the other, they try to prefetch these things. Uh, we've decided we'd rather focus on apps that are always available uh, in their entirety instead of uh, parts of them. Uh, let's take a quick step back. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Minix apps used to always be inherently online. Uh, we have a picture here of how Mendix mobile apps used to work in Minix 5. Um, in hybrid apps, what you generally have is uh, th th this hybrid wrapper, the app that you install, isn't really that much more than a small app that spawns a browser. And this browser talks directly to the Mendix cloud, uh, grabbing data, forms, and everything is in real time, it's all online. As soon as you don't uh, have any information, the whole app kind of breaks down, you get an error or things start to move really slow. Uh, everything uh, works online and it kind of treats the Mendix uh, cloud as a database. So what we did uh, for Mendix 6, for uh, offline, is we kind of just duplicated the database, or at least the relevant information, inside a small SQLite database on your phone. Uh, and whenever you sync, whenever you start the app, or whenever you hit that sync button, it tries to grab all of that information from the cloud for the, your user, for your app, and it stores it on that local SQLite database. And what we can then do is even if the cloud is offline or you don't have any network connectivity, your app can continue to work because it grabs all of this information from that uh, database, from that store on your phone. 
Unfortunately, this also does create certain limitations. Um, uh, you, you might know microflows. You might also know that these are very much server runtime uh, based. Uh, microflows always run in the cloud. So if you want an offline app and you want them the, the, the way we kind of intend them uh, to work, i.e. they work all, uh, all the time uh, in all cases, you can't really use them. So for that reason, uh, we've limited uh, the use of microflows in all offline apps. You can't uh, utilize them. Another unfortunate uh, limitation is that you can't use XPaths. The SQLite database that I was talking about earlier has very limited querying uh, abilities, which is why you can't use uh, very complex uh, queries such as XPath. You can, however, use the uh, database data source, which is a simpler query language, uh, which we introduced in Mendix 6. And last but not least, uh, due to uh, the fact that it's very hard to have multiple people edit the same data, you actually really, really, really quickly end up with corrupted data. We've chosen to uh, limit what you can do and you can only create data. You can create objects, entities, as much as you like. You can also edit them on your phone as long as you don't sync them back up. After that, they will become uh, read-only. So, then how do you turn it on? Uh, this is actually quite simple. In Mendix 5, you are probably used to having the three uh, navigation profiles, desktop, tablet, and phone. And we've simply added an extra one offline. And if you enable it and configure a home page, that's actually the only thing you really have to do. Uh, from then on, all of the forms and everything that you can access from that home page will be limited somewhat in scope use microflows. But we also go through all those things and we make sure that all of that data is available on your phone to use. And that's all there really is to it. It's really uh, easy and it's quite similar to the way you create online apps, uh, except for the fact that you can't use microflows and data sources. Uh, right now I'd like to kick it back over to Danny. He's going to tell you how you can uh, work around some of these limitations and how to uh, create successful offline mobile apps. Thank you, uh, Kiel. Um, my name is uh, Danny Roost, and I will be sharing some experience and tips and tricks when creating an offline capable app with Mendix. Uh, first of all, Mendix World App 2016. Uh, at Mendix, we also like to do dog feeding, so we decided to make the Mendix World App an offline capable app. Uh, the Mendix World App is an event information app in which you can see the program, the speakers, the sponsors, etc. However, there's also functionality like voting and providing uh, feedback. We have some lessons learned uh, from the Mendix uh, World 2016, which I would like to share uh, with you. Um, initially, we started with upgrading the Mendix World 2014 app. However, we ended up with basically redesigning the whole application uh, for the mobile part. So we redesigned the navigation and the pages. Many microflows uh, were removed. So one lesson we learned is basically you need to design for offline because the model is quite different uh, when you compare offline and online apps. Um, especially in the beginning, it can be a bit more difficult when creating offline apps because you cannot do all the things you normally do. But in the end, we discovered that the model was really simple because it, there are basically pages with buttons that are linked together. So that is a, a nice uh, advantage uh, with offline. And we also noticed, basically also as expected, that the performance was better in offline mode than in online mode, which is also logical because there are no HTTP calls. However, at Mendix World, we also experienced an issue uh, when the connection was really flaky, that the synchronization was not stable. This happened because there were many people at the same time, same location, used uh, the same Wi-Fi. Uh, we fixed this now, so that's good news. Um, yeah, we also improved the performance of the synchronization uh, in general, and more will be improved in the, in the future. 
So after this uh, first experience, we also could see the an, a comparison with the game Rummy Cup. Um, I don't know if you guys know Rummy Cup, but Rummy Cup is a game where you need to match different tiles together and you need to get rid of all your uh, tiles. And in general, you start playing and at some point you almost get rid of all your tiles and you think, ah, now I can do this and I can then do that and then I win. So I need to shuffle the board and then I can get rid of my last uh, tiles. But often when you start shuffling and you start placing your tiles, there's still one left which is forgotten and you still haven't won yet. This is a bit the same with offline. It's sometimes you see a problem or a challenge and you need to solve it. You think, oh, okay, I can do it, this, this and that, and then it works, but you can forget one essential thing why it doesn't work. So you always need to think about it, about the limitations and possibilities with uh, offline. I will be explaining now some patterns for creating offline capable apps by using an inspection app as a use case. And in this case, we um, have a fictive company called Candix, and Candix offers the leasing of candy machines. So companies can lease candy machines from Mendix. And Candix has inspectors that every X period inspect the lease machines on site uh, for defects and possible uh, restocks, restocking. And for that, they need an app, the Candix Inspection App. The Candix Inspection App is an offline capable app for inspecting, inspecting the leased candy machines. So basically what the app does, an inspector comes on site at the customer, he selects the customer on his mobile phone, he says, I want to create an inspection, he then sees a list of the candy machine types that the customer has, he selects the, the candy machine type, he then sees the possible defect types for that candy machine and from that he can create a finding, enter some notes, add some pictures, etc and you can repeat this uh, process um, for the inspection. I will now be discussing some different scenarios and how you can solve them in respect to this uh, app. So as an inspector, I only want to see the possible type of defects for the current candy machine. So as you can imagine, there are different types of candy machines and they can have different type of defects. So I only want to see the relevant defect types for the current candy machine. You can solve this by using navigation via associations. If you look at the domain model on the right of this slide, you see that a defect has a reference to a candy machine. So you can create a page with the candy machines, and when you click on a candy machine, it will open the page with the defect types. But also the candy machine is passed as a context object, and you only show the defect types that have a relation to the candy machine, as you can see here on the, the picture. So in this way, you can also achieve a kind of filtering. As an inspector, I want to create a finding related to a defect type and the candy machine. So I only want to create a finding for this specific candy machine. How can we do that? So if you look at the domain model again to the right, you see a finding is related to a defect uh, type. So once you selected the candy machine, the defect type, you can create a new finding, so, which is an object, uh, via a new button. And since Mendix 6.3, a new button also sets the association to the current object. So the relation is automatically created uh, for you. And you see in the screenshot how this works. As an inspector, I want to verify that the to be refilled candy is available. Now this is typically a use case where you need to be online. You never have the actual stock, for example, uh, because there are other inspectors or stock changes uh, constantly. And one way to solve this is using after commit microflows. Um, with offline KPOF, you can still use microflows after commit, which will be executed when the data is synced with the server. If there is no connection, uh, the data is synced the next time, by the way. So you can use these microflows for validation. So is there still a stock for this uh, type of candy? Or you can do some other the, uh, logic. And 
you can also handle your synchronization issues here if you notice there are multiple mutations to the same type of object, uh, for example. As an inspector, I want to change the phone number of the customer. As you might remember, um, Akil said you cannot change existing data, but you can add new data. And we can use this to create change objects. As you see here in the domain uh, model to the right, you have a change customer object with some attributes uh, which you can use to collect the change data. And in an after commit microflow, you can set these to the normal customer. So you use a new object in which you copy these values to the existing object. And of course, here again, you can resolve um, synchronization or validation issues. As an inspector, I want to synchronize my data. So there are different possibilities to synchronize your data and when the data is uh, synchronized. In this case, when an uh, inspector created a finding, you can say OK or you can say save and the app automatically tries to sync the data after clicking the save button. If the data cannot be synced at this time, uh, the data is synced after the while the next synchronization takes place. Also, Mendix automatically syncs your data at startup and there's a sync button which you can use to say I want to sync right now. The save on sync option is an option at, at the save button which, we, which you can also see at the screenshot. As a developer I want to create a valid mo model that is offline capable. So when creating a mobile application uh, yeah, you want to make sure your model is uh, valid for offline uh, use. However, you also want to test in your browser, so it's very easy to um, make use of the normal online mobile functionality. And you can do this by setting the same home page for your online mobile app and your offline mobile app. And in this, with this approach, the model is also validated for offline use. So you can be sure if you create a model for online that it also will work for offline. As a developer, I want to create a widget that is offline capable. This is pretty easy to do. Here you see a screenshot. Also, you can add one attribute offline capable is true to your widget XML and then your widget is also offline capable. At that point, the Mendix modeler will also validate your widget but it can only validate the parameters you're using and not the logic inside your widget. So you can still use online functionality, but the Mendix modeler cannot check for that. So to summarize these um, best practices or patterns, you can use navigation via associations in which you can only show the relevant items or you can use it for filtering. With new buttons, you can set associations. With an after commit microflow, you can apply additional validation or logic that requires internet and you can handle possible synchronization issues. You can use change objects for changing existing data and handle possible synchronization issues. You can use the sync on safe option to directly sync your data if there is a connection. You can use the same homepage for online and offline for easy developing while still having the advantage of that the model is validated for offline use and for widgets you can add the offline capable is true to the widget uh, XML. I now will be handing over the microphone back to Akil. Great, thanks uh, Danny uh, for that. I think uh, we all learned a lot of uh, useful tips and tricks as, uh, to, to create offline apps. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the, some widgets uh, that we've uh, recently upgraded and some new ones that we're going to be launching and a couple of extra features that, we'll, that we've snuck into Mendix 7 that's uh, due later this year. For starters, we always uh, had a camera widget. This is also now uh, offline capable. So if you do take uh, pictures uh, with your device, uh, your tablet or your phone, uh, those pictures will be stored on your device 
and then whenever you sync, those pictures will also be sent to backup. Next is the add to contacts. That was also something that had some uh, online dependencies. We've uh, removed those now, and this is also totally offline capable. So you can add, uh, you can directly import contacts from your Mendix app to your uh, your phone uh, or a tablet to contacts, uh, even uh, while in the jungle. Uh, coming up soon is our calendar uh, widgets, uh, also uh, offline uh, capable. We uh, made the offline cable for the Mendix World app and we'll be releasing it soon so you have those capabilities uh, as well. Then another uh, cool new one is uh, native share. If there's anything in your app that you want uh, users to be able to easily share, let's say uh, the for the Mendix World app for instance, uh, one thing we saw a lot of people do was they wanted to quickly share the fact that they were going on track with other people. Uh, this is now a, a, a widget that you can, or it will soon be a widget from our app store that you can uh, use and you can share whatever, you know, whether it's a piece of information or some contact information or a URL, and you can allow users to then select uh, how they want to share those, whether it be via message or Twitter, uh, you can, uh, people can do that. Another cool one is the navigation uh, feature. We we always we've always had a Google Maps integration. We've always had a, a widget that allowed you to uh, grab a Google Maps uh, document and uh, put markers there to show uh, certain points of interest. Uh, what we've added new now is the ability to plot routes directly. So let's say we're building something like the inspection app that we were talking about earlier. Uh, with our previous uh, widget offering, you would have to tell people to click on something and then manually navigate to it. Now you can open the navigation uh, software directly and uh, start navigating immediately. Then for Mendix 7, I'm, I'm not really going to go through the huge expanse of features that we've announced that we're going to uh, release. I think uh, Johan covered that quite well at Mendix World. But there are two uh, bonus features that we've managed to sneak in. For one, hybrid online. A lot of our customers have been asking us, yeah, but it's all fine, this whole offline thing, but what if I just have a small part of my application that I want available online? What if most of my application can be online, but there's this, just this one thing that I do really need those microflows or those things? And we're going to enable a type of hybrid mode soon where you can mark certain parts of your app as offline and then uh, jump through a part which is online. And that way you can uh, create apps which have huge offline parts such as uh, a lot of people ask us about uh, having reference materials available offline always and then having the more complex uh, operations uh, behind a button somewhere and have those only available when you're at an office and you do have Wi-Fi connection. So we'll be enabling that and releasing it as uh, Mendix 7. Uh, the other thing that a lot of uh, customers have been giving us feedback on is uh, conditional visibility. Uh, for one, it's still uh, at the moment limited to enumerations and booleans. Uh, what we see a lot of people doing is in order to create more complex uh, forms, they, they they almost always have to resort to microflows, and not only microflows, they, they're then also forced to using uh, virtual attributes, and future attributes, for those of you that don't know, are attributes that have a microflow linked to them, and they're calculated all the time, uh, in order to create any semblance of a sane UI. The, the fact that uh, microflows uh, aren't available for offline, uh, challenged us to come up with a way of doing this. Uh, so what we've done is we're going to greatly improve the expressiveness of conditional visibility and we're going to allow you to use any type of microflow expression, anything that you can type into a box in a microflow uh, and use that as conditional visibility. So that'll allow you to do stuff such as only show something if the order, the price of the order is more than a hundred, for instance, or only show it if uh, the ticket is still open or closed or if it's uh, open and the price is uh, larger, uh, etc. And I think with those uh, two things we've uh, added some really great uh, features to mobile offline uh, and will allow you to create even more cool uh, offline apps. 
thanks uh, a lot uh, for listening. It's been a blast uh, hosting uh, this uh, webinar, and we're very curious about your questions. All right, thank you very much, guys, for the presentations. It was really great to hear more about uh, the offline capabilities, but not only the good stuff, but also uh, learning about uh, doing projects yourself and what you've learned to improve the product. That was that was really good. We already have some questions in the questions window, um, so I'll ask the first question to Denny, uh, and the question was asked by Gunnar Eriksson. He says, can an offline app be upgraded to online easily? And perhaps the second question is related to that. How feasible is it to change offline uh, after the development is midway? So you're all, you're, you've already started developing an app for offline, but what about if you want to go all online or what about the other way around? Yeah, yeah so Thank you uh, for those questions. Um, to answer the first question, so every offline app you make is also a valid online app. So your offline app will immediately work for online. Um, yeah, we also say it, I, w I think I called it in the slides, you need, really need to design for offline. So start thinking about how you set up your application and design it for offline, and then you can always go back to online. Basically, offline is a subset of online. I hope that answers your question. All right, thank you very much. Um, the next question is, uh, can you define microflow? So, um, probably, uh, I think what he's trying to ask is, uh, does any microflow work for offline, or is it just completely uh, locked out? Um, good question. Um, you cannot use microflows uh, generically. You cannot use them, let's say, from a button. However, you can use microflows uh, for after commit. So when an object is synchronized and committed, you can use the before and after commit. And in there, you can use uh, yeah the full microflow um, functionality, but not uh, directly from the navigation. So from every page you can reach from the navigation, fire buttons, etc. The modeler checks whether you're using microflows and that is not allowed. All right. All right. I think that clears that up. Um, the next question is uh, by uh, Bodo uh, Schenk. He asks, the online version will usually have more functions and possibilities than the offline version. Uh, for example, more or completely other menus, buttons, or pages. So can the user switch between online or offline mode, or does the GUI change automatically when a connection is re-established? I think uh, Achille will take care of this one. Uh, thanks, good question. The, uh, the, the, the way we'll uh, change this in uh, Mendix 7 is we're, we're not going to actively hide nor uh, unhide uh, buttons. What we will do is allow you to uh, add microflow buttons to your UI. Uh, once you hit a microflow, you will go to the online section of your app, uh, and there you can do whatever you want. Uh, we, we're not going to dynamically change the, the UI in any way. And then once you're in your online uh, uh, app, uh, if you hit a network connection, we'll bounce you back either to the last screen you were that was available offline, or you go back to your home page. That's the way you'll be able to express that. All right, great, thank you very much. Uh, Ronald Katesels asks, uh, virtual attributes are also used for multi-language apps to retrieve the correct object in the right language. How can this be done offline, if that can be done? offline. In offline mode, um, a virtual, uh, good question, uh, a relatively advanced question, but we like those. Um, so uh, as we stated earlier, virtual attributes aren't uh, available offline due to the, the microflows that are uh, attached to those. The way I would model this in an offline environment is by uh, 
having the user somehow constrained to the language and then only sync the appropriate uh, language entities to that uh, user and not try to dynamically change it in uh, the UI. Uh, I think that's a relatively complicated solution. In this case, I would do it uh, through uh, security constraints or constraining another way uh, and having only the relevant stuff synced to your device. All right. Thank you for the explanation. Uh, Hardy Junk asks, when do we get offline microflows? And probably more relevant, what is stopping this? Hi, Hardy. Good question. <laughs> uh, I'd love uh, nothing more than to do this uh, right now. Uh, to be honest, uh, it's uh, mostly in the complexity of uh, porting the microflow language uh, to our clients. Uh, this is exactly why we're enabling uh, microflow expressions in our condition visibility first that should enable us to uh, implement uh, an offline version of microflows uh, relatively quickly afterwards. All right. The next question is by Marietta de Graaf. She asks, why should you use an after commit microflow instead of the before commit? And uh, Denny will take care of this question. Okay, good question. Um, there is no real right or wrong here. It's more when is what type of uh, event handler appropriate. Um, in general, when you want to commit something and do some synchronization, you can use the after commit, but you can also use the uh, before commit and then do not save anything. Or Yeah, it basically depends on your use case. So you can, in most cases, you can use uh, both. All right, thank you. Uh, keep in mind, you can still ask questions through the GoToWebinar questions window. The next question is by uh, Param Lier. He asks, how much additional storage space needs to be planned for the app when we use the offline option? So um, how much space is it going to use for your mobile device? Good questions. Um, of course, it depends on your uh, model and your uh, data, but in general, it's only a couple of uh, megabytes of data. There's some overhead for the app, for the database, but it isn't uh, much, but it mostly depends on the images uh, you sync. All right, great. Um, that's all the questions we've received so far. If you still have a question, uh, please enter them now in the questions window and uh, we'll try to answer them. So we'll take some time to uh, let you think about if you have any more questions on offline mobile. Okay, we, uh, we just received one from Hardy Jonk. Uh, just for conditional visibility, can we now hide fields that are null with new scheme? Um, uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, with the new conditional visibility, you can use any uh, microflow expression, so you'll also be able to compare the value of uh, certain fields to null. Uh, we're really happy to uh, also be able to address those uh, use cases. A lot of people have often asked us, like, yeah, I want to be able to compare or to see if a string is empty or whether a reference is empty or whether a string contains a certain character. You'll be able to do all of those things from conditional visibility and show a certain UI elements based on uh, that. All right, great. Thanks for the explanation. Um, we received another one from Gunnar Eriksson. Are offline mobile technology limited, or is it vendor limited? Uh, hi, uh, interesting question. I, I hope I'm interpreting this uh, uh, right. We, we, we've based the offline mobile technology on two frameworks, uh, largely. The first is uh, mobile apps in Mendix are wrapped using Cordova, or Cordova phone app, if you will. This is a shell that allows you to wrap web apps in a native container and allow you to leverage native technologies. Uh, that's all open source. 
license under uh, Apache, so that, uh, that that should be fine. If you want to extend that or dig deeper into that, you can uh, go wild. Uh, the other uh, technology that we leverage heavily here is uh, SQLite. Uh, this is also an open uh, source uh, technology and we use that to store the actual data on disk on uh, devices. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question is by Paramlier. Is it possible to prioritize the offline sync needs based on bandwidth needs, for example, images, and availability, Wi-Fi versus 2G, 3G, and so on? Uh, this is unfortunately uh, currently not uh, possible. Uh, it's an interesting uh, thing that, or an interesting question that we'll uh, investigate. Uh, at this moment, we don't have plans to offer such uh, customizability. All right, that's a good suggestion, though. Um, let's look at the next question. Uh, when we get uh, a more, fu uh, when can we get a more functional interface to applying a microflow uh, to a list like MapReduce filter? Um, it is indeed a little off topic. Um, I don't know if you want to go into that, Achille. Yeah. To be honest, uh, those are not my team, so I, I can't uh, say exactly. I do know that we're looking to expand in that area because it allows you to do a lot more things in terms of uh, what we want uh, third-party module developers to uh, allow to do. So it's definitely on our radar, it's definitely something that we want to start enabling because you want to start doing stuff like uh, having a microflow as a parameter to your, your custom module, some Java action, but I can't unfortunately give you any uh, ETA or uh, time frame for that. All right. Um, all right, we're doing the last question. Uh, is there a failure in submitting data? Uh, can one save the failed data in the staging state or area rather than complete, uh, completely fail the data? Very good question. We perform the sync in a transaction, so either all of your data gets synced or none of your data gets synced. And if it uh, fails, your data is simply retained on your device, on your phone, uh, and it'll await to the next moment that you can sync, and then you'll uh, resubmit all of your data. All right, the last question is by Gunnar Eriksson, and he asks, is offline mobile uh, operating system dependent? We currently offer offline mobile for uh, Android and iOS, and those two platforms only. All right. Uh, thank you all very much for attending the webinar and for asking a lot of questions. Uh, this is it for today. The next webinar will be next month on August 26th, where Clyde Val will be talking about native REST. Uh, please don't forget to leave your feedback on the way out. And uh, thank you for joining. And see you next time.